Shalom Yisrael. Shalom Yisrael. Hallelujah. Are we alive in here? Hallelujah. 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 We know that it is the Ruach HaKodesh that gives us life. The Ruach HaKodesh is Yahweh's anointing. It sets us apart. As I get to this message today concerning the portion, and those of you that have received the new le- newsletter, I somewhat wrote just a brief, just a brief summary of what this message is going to be about. We're going to move here, we're going to move there in the Torah. But we must understand, Yisrael, that without the anointing of Almighty Yahweh, or his Ruach resting upon us, we will not be able to make it until the end. Many times we think of the end as being the end of the world. But it foretells more than just the end of the world. It talks about also the end of one's life, the end of one's breath. We hear about the end time many times our focus is towards the bombings and things that we think should happen. Our minds go before Almighty Yahweh, and we try to imagine what things are going to take place when Torah already tells us what's going to take place. And we miss the forefront on the main thing that we should be watchful for, and that is our own nephesh, our own lives. The ending of the last breath of these earthly tabernacles. So when Yahshua speaks about the end time, it's more than just the revelation of those things that should take place, the end of the world. But it's also the end of this life. But yet even as we think about the end of this life, there is a, a knowing. We know that the resurrection, the raising of the condition. Yet, pins for us. It is for us, Yisrael. But we must make sure that we have what it takes to make it unto the end. Whether it's the end of death, whether it's the end we take this last breath, or whether it is though that Yahweh, he has his husset, that we make it to see the latter days or the last, or the end, Yisrael. So I want us to understand somewhat the anointing. That we understand what the oil is used for many a times when one is in need of prayer, pala, Torah instructs us to anoint them with oil. Also, when it talks about, about even Aharon, which we call the priests of the Nabe, those that bring the offering before Almighty Yahweh, the Torah speaks of them being anointed or anointed with the oil. And what the oil represents and what it does for us, it is a token of separation. So when we are anointed by the Ruach HaKodesh, it is a token or it is what we call a sign of separation, that we are departed or we are, re- or we are removed from this world. We are removed from the things that contaminate the Ruach. We are removed from those things that cause us to walk contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, those things that cause us to sin. We see one that is anointed. When we come up, you see the oil placed on the forehead. There's a brilliance to that. There's a shining. It's something that is noticeable of all things. When one has the anointing of Almighty Yahweh, you will see the light in their face, in their vigils, what they produce and what they show, Yisrael. The anointing oil causes one's face to shine. And what does shining or that light, because what it does is just illuminate the light wherever it comes from. It shows one that he has the understanding, that he has the binah, and also wisdom. So that is why Yahweh, he sets us apart. He anoints us, Yisrael. We are the anointed of Almighty Yahweh. We should be set apart from those things of the world. We should not allow those things that take place in the world cause us to walk contrary to his mitzvah, to his Torah. Because he has given us all things, Yisrael, for us to not only endure, but for us to stand. One of the things I did ascribe in the prelude, or what I had written on the first, on the letter, is concerning the five wise and the five foolish, and I will get to that. But those of us that can recall that situation, or as Yahshua spoke, what was called the parable, and understanding, even we can apply that to our own lives, 
that there were five wise, there was five foolish. One set had enough to take them through the night season as they slumbered and slept. Mind you, both groups slumbered and slept. But yet there was a group that ran out, that have enough of the oil. What does that entail for us, Israel? We must make sure that we are what filled. And not only filled, but there is enough reserve for us that we make it into the milk hoop. Because there was those that did not enter when the bridegroom came. When the call went forth, why? Because they went to try to buy or to purchase the oil and it was too late. What are we purchasing, Israel? What are we buying? Should we not buy truth? Should we not buy the mitzvah, the Torah? Did not Yahshua tell us or instruct us to buy of him the pure gold that has been tried in the fire? So in order for one to purchase or to ascertain, he has to have some riches, does he not? He has something to give. He has to give up something. If we would recall also what we hear so many times as the rich young ruler, did he not have much? But what was the one thing that Yahshua said unto him? But you lack. But you lack. But you lack. We lack Israel. Whether we want to receive that or not, we don't have what it takes to bring us unto the end. Why? Because first of all, we have not purchased. We have not bought of Almighty Yahweh. We have not bought the truth. We have not bought the gold that has been tried in the fire. We think we have what it takes, but we're fooling ourselves, Israel. It's time for us to, to search ourselves. It's time for us to watch earnestly. And that we dig deep to find out those things that we are lacking. The rich or the young ruler, he thought that he had it all. He said that I kept the mitzvah of these things from my youth. But Yahweh said, Yahshua said, no. He looked on him with a hava, did he not? Do you recall what I preached on Kadvei Imat? He had a hava to this one. So he told him the truth. Did he buy it? No, he did not. Why? Because in his mind, he had all that he needed. He didn't want to give what he had. That he may ascertain the Melchut, the kingdom of Israel. We must give up what we have. The world has taught us that we have riches, that we have something worthwhile. But it all is vanity. It does not last. The riches of this life does not last. So what should we offer unto Almighty Yahweh? What does it take that we purchase the gold, that we make sure that we have enough of the Ruach, this anointing, this oil, Yisrael. This Torah does not it tell us, it instructs us, it does, and with simplicity that we understand what it takes. That we continue, that we endure, that we not grow weary in that thing that Yahweh has called us to do, Yisrael. So I do want us, I want to begin here in Matitia, Matthew chapter 25. Verse 7. This is concerning the oil. Hallelujah. And then I want us to turn to, I want to move back into the 24th chapter of the saying, Matthew. But it says here in Matthew chapter 25, verse 7. This is concerning the virgins. It says, then all. Did it say all? Yes. So every one of them. Cold. All the virgins that did arise or they arose and they trim their lamps. What does that mean they trim their lamps? It is to somewhat adjust it, clean the ashes or the residue that sometimes collects around the wick, that it burns bright. It somewhat entails our own ruach. Do we trim? That was one of the things that Yahweh taught Adam in the beginning. He said, I've I given you the garden to take care of it, that you labor. That's what trimming a lamp does. Even in the Bay of Israel, even concerning the lamp or the menorah, 
It was given to those a responsibility to make sure that it was trim, that the wick burned bright, that it was sufficient, that it even burned the oil at a sufficient rate. It did not consume the oil, that it didn't smoke, but that it burned with a bright light. Yahweh has given us instruction, Israel, that this light of truth, of understanding, of wisdom burn. That his ruach burns within our nephesh, Israel. But are we doing the things that are necessary? Are we trimming the lamps? Are we making sure that there is sufficient oils? Is, uh, uh, is the wick dirty? Those of you that have burned kerosene, I believe we all have burned kerosene. When the wick gets dirty and it burns out, that thing smokes. It doesn't heat like it, like it does. And one of the things you notice, you look at the flame, no matter how you turn that thing and try to get the flame up, it just doesn't rise. So many times if you don't take care of the wick, it burns out, then you have to replace that. We must take care of the wick. We must take, uh, take care of our nephesh, Israel. As I recall the song, even as a child, not, we shouldn't let the light or the light of Yahshua that shines, should we not let it shine? And we should not hide it, should we not? Sin hides the brightness. Sin allows the wick, Israel, to become, to become uh, burnt out. That's why it's important, just as it is in the bed of Israel concerning the menorah, that we trim. That we take care of not only us, but also our AK, our whole king. Because it represents the whole house, the whole house of Israel, and also the Ruhakim, or the, the, the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. So, what should we do to trim? Let me continue reading. reading. They said they arose. And they trimmed their lamps. They made their lamps ready. They adjusted it. They made the necessary uh, adjustments to it. And the foolish said unto the wise. So there was those that was foolish. There were those that was wise that had the hook of Almighty Yahweh. There was those that did not have the understanding. Why? Because if they did, they would have made the proper preparations. It says in verse 8, that the foolish said to give us of your oil. Give us of that anointing, the fire, that which ignites the fire of Almighty Yahweh. For our lamps, they have gone out. Have our lamps gone out, Israel? Can we look at one another? Look at your neighbor. Everyone look at one another. Look at the one beside you. Turn around, look at the one behind you, one in front of you. Do you see the light? Is it burning? Is it shining bright? And what we would do in ourselves, we would say, well, my light is shining bright. I know. Do you yada? Do you truly know? Let me, be, let me continue reading. I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Because Yahshua, he knew that the tabernacle or the bed of Yahweh would be destroyed. Even at that time, if we could see it in the physical eyes, it was brilliant, it was bright. Magnificent structure. There was buildings round about it that, that somewhat entailed the strength and the beauty of Yisrael. But yet Torah speaks as these bodies being the tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh. Yahshua knowing that the tabernacle will be torn down. Do we not realize that these very tabernacles will be torn down? That it must be torn down, Yisrael, that prophecy may be fulfilled. That we must lay down our life, Yisrael, we must impel this flesh continually. That the Torah may shine. So he says this. And Yahshua went out and departed from the great bed, the great, great tabernacle. And his disciples, they came to him to show him the buildings, the places of the great tabernacle. And Yahshua said to them, see you not all these things. He said, you're beholding, you're looking, you're astonished. Do you not see all of this and its power, its grandeur, and its strength? He says, truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. 
He said, you see this? Everything that we see, that you see, it should be thrown down, it should be torn down. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciplined ones, his disciples came to him, privately saying, tell us, explain to us why. Because it troubled them that the bed of the great tabernacle will one day come to an end. So they wanted to know what the signs, what should we look for to prepare ourselves. They said, tell us when these things shall be. Tell us, Yahshua. When these things shall be. And what shall be the sign of your coming? And not only that, but the end of the world. That's something we all have wondered about and we want to know. More so that we can make, more, more so we, that we can make ourselves ready in the preparation. But one thing as a people and a nation that we do, when we know we have time to do something, we find ourselves wandering and doing other things, wasting time. Why? Because it's not yet. I know what time, so let me, let me do a little bit of this. Let me sin a little bit. Let me lie a little bit, then I'll get it straight. It doesn't work that way, Israel. So do we know the time and the hour that Yahshua comes? He goes on and says this. In verse 4. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. He said, take heed that no man deceives you. We think that it's someone else. We think it's going to be the government. We think it's going to be the club of Rome. We think it's going to be the president of the United States. But it is not so. It is a hidden man of our own love, Israel, that deceives us. He said, take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am the Messiah, that I am the Deliverer. And the Torah says that they shall deceive many. And he says this in verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do we not hear that? We look, upon, we look at the news. The newspaper, there's always wars. There's always rumors of wars. There's always something that is taking place about the nations. But what is going on right here? Let's bring it home, Israel. Let's bring it home. Many times when you look at the news media and they talk about things that are going around the world, you forget about what's happening at home. You forget about what's happening in your own country. You forget about what's happening in your own house. And it, it, it distorts the view of everything, Israel. If we are wise, we should be able to take the things that are happening in our own lives and our own homes, and you can look around and apply it to everything that's going on in the world. It's in dis disarray. It's in a mess, Israel. So he said, you hear wars and rumors of wars. He said, I want you to see that you be not troubled. He said, see that you're not troubled. See that these things not detour you off of the path. See that these things not cause you to not please Yahweh and to, to keep heart, to keep imuna. To hold on to Imuna. To see that these things not trouble you. He says, why? Because all these things, they must. They must. The breaking down of the bed, it must happen. The destroying of this body, of this flesh, it must take place, Israel. It must be torn down. He said, for all these things must come to pass. But he tells them, but the end, it is not yet. He said, the end is not yet. Even though know, you see all these things taking place around the world, yet the end is not yet. It's not the final time. It's not like, as they said, he, he pulled somewhat the plug. It's not yet time. We must be ready, Israel. Yahweh has given us an allotted time, even though we see all these things that are taking place, to make sure that we are where he wants us to be. To make sure that our lamps are trimmed. To make sure that we have the oil of his ruach and that we are filled, Israel. He said in verse 7, For nations shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. He said, All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you. 
and, shall, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Are we ready for this? Yet our brother says something against us and we're offended. Our mama says things against us and we're offended. Our so-called friends in the world make statements against us and we're offended. We're broken. We're cast down. And we think we're ready for this to take place. We think we're ready to enter into this, Israel. He said, they should deliver you up to be afflicted and should kill you. And you should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He said, and then many. Did it say many? Yeah. It says, and then shall many offend and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Verse 11. And many pseudo, that is false, that is lying prophets, shall arise. And shall, it says, deceive what? Many. many. Shall deceive the masses. Shall deceive many. So how do we know when this false one, this false nubby, this false prophet, this pseudo prophet comes? How do we know? Are we able to judge one by Torah to see if he's false? Will we be able to see the light and the understanding upon his face? Will it shine? How do we know Yisrael? It goes on in verse 12. It says, And because iniquity shall abound, the Ahava, the love of many, shall wax cold. Verse 13. But he that what? Shall what? Endure. endure. We must endure, Yisrael. Going back to what I read concerning the five wise and the five foolish. The five foolish were not able to endure because they did not have enough oil. They didn't have the oil to take them through the night season. They did not take this situation, this time, seriously. That they made the right preparations, just right, y'all. We must make the right preparations. We must, we must make sure that we are ready to endure these kind of things. And it takes the Ruach to be able to endure. It takes his Ruach to be able to stand. It takes the oil of his anointing, Israel, that sets us apart for all things to keep us. That's the only thing that's going to keep us is his Ruach and his Mishra, his Torah. He said, but he that shall endure to the end. The Torah says the same. It says the same. The same shall be delivered. But we must endure. We must make sure that we're established, Israel. We must make sure that we abide, that we remain in the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. And without his anointing upon us, without us being filled, in order for one to be filled or a container or a substance to be, or something to be filled, it has to be empty. All right? It has to be empty. We must empty ourselves out, Israel, of this trash of this filthiness, the sin. We must empty ourselves. We must allow the Torah to take those things away from us, Israel. And that will not take place until we start some confessing in here. We must confess unto Almighty Yahweh our sins. We must make known our iniquity. We must, as they say, we must come clean. In order for one that is on drugs or there's a drunkard, they must first admit that they are a drunkard. That yes, I am hooked. I'm hooked on sin. I need help. And until we come to that realization and understanding, Israel, we will not be able to be filled with the oil, with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. So we must confess our, fear, our, our, our sins. Why? That the prayer of those that are Kadesh, that are set apart, would avail much. That it would cause us to realize where we are, where we stand, and that we get it right, Israel, y'all. That we'll be able to endure these things that we see in the end. That we'll be filled with the oil, the anointing of Almighty Yahweh that sets us apart. Which is also used oil, as we have heard concerning the menorah, to keep it lit. We have gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, all types of oils that we use to light fires, to heat, to burn lamps. All types of fuels. But yet, without oil, you can't burn anything. Without oil, 
Even in a vehicle, in a car, in that engine, the engine will wear out. The engine will, will, will fail on you, Israel. You must have oil to keep things lubricated, that it moves freely. We find ourselves stiff in the bed of Yah. We're lacking oil. Because we're stiff. We don't want to move before Almighty Yahweh. We're like a, a, a rusty door hinge. We don't want to move. So it takes oil. Oil is very important. For what we call even in the nations as the economy, that's one of the main things that they fight over. It's oil. Hallelujah. Are we willing to fight for the oil? Of the Ruach? That we ascertain unto all things that Yahweh, that Torah has commanded us, Israel. Yah. Move me to Shemoth, Exodus chapter 25, verse 21. We must be able to endure. We must have those tools, the implements, the oil, everything we need, Israel, Yah, that we may endure. That we may keep the tigva, the amuna. That we're willing to stand and fight, Israel. Yah. That we have faith to continue. And it takes the burning of the light of truth and one's life and one's bosom that we may continue. Even in this dark, in this present darkness, Israel, that we continue in the path that Yahweh has ordained for us because we have a, a ways to go. And without light in the darkness, you can't see where you're going. You can't dodge the obstacles that are in your way because you simply cannot see them. So we must have the light. We must have the anointing. We need the anointing, Israel. Yah. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. And Yahweh, he spoke unto Moshe. He spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, Yah, that they bring me an offering. Have we brought an offering into the bay, Israel, Yah, of praise, of todah? Hallelujah. An offering made by fire. That our even our very bodies, our nephesh that we present unto Yahweh as a living offering. He commanded them to bring an offering of every man that gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. So the offering had to be willing. We have to be obedient, Israel. We cannot be grudging when it comes to giving unto Almighty Yahweh, whether it's money, whether it's tithes, whether it's offering, whether it's labor or anything of that nature, if we say we're giving it to Almighty Yahweh, that we're giving Yahweh our all, we cannot give it grudgingly. We cannot hold back. We cannot say that someone's making me do this. It should be with a willing heart. And the Torah said that Yahweh, he will receive his offering. Verse 3, And this offering which you shall take of them should be of gold, of silver, it says of brass, Blue and purple, scarlet, and fine linen, and goat hair. This was all the things that was the children of Israel at this time was bringing to your bed of Kol Yisrael with the willing lamb. And ram skins, dyed and red, and badger skins, all these things, shittim wood. But verse 6, what I want to get to, it says oil. They had to bring also the oil. One thing that was important about the oil, it had to be hand-pressed. It had to be pure. It had to be filtered, Israel. We can't bring things to the bed of Almighty Yahweh and say we're offering up our praise and omulations unto Yahweh knowing that we are unpure, we're unclean, that there are spots and things in the oil. One statement I recall hearing on one of the stories that we play, that a fly being in the ointment, even though it's just one singular thing, it causes the whole container to be, to be uh, contaminated. Just one thing. It is not pure. It is not clean. So we must bring an offering before Almighty Yahweh that is clean, that is pure. He said they brought in verse 6 the oil for what? The light. They brought oil for the light. We must have oil for the light. Did not Yahshua say that I am the light? that has come into the world, into the Olam. But what did we do? What did men do? They rejected the light because they are in darkness. They don't want the oil. Because with that oil comes a flame that reveals all things, Israel. The Ruach reveals all things. Don't think that we're hiding or that you can hide 
from the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh because we cannot hide. It is a light and it burns bright, Yisrael. Right, so they brought the oil for the light and not only that, spices for, it says, the anointing oil. The anointing oil. The anointing oil. What does that do? What is the purpose of the anointing oil? What was different from that which is the anointing oil and just the oil? They added the fragrance to the oil. They added spices. That it gave it a, a sweet smelling smell. The Torah even talks about the ointment as even filling the bed of Almighty Yahweh. And if we have the ointment of the oil of Almighty Yahweh, his anointing, there would be a fragrance that would fill the house. A sweet smelling smell unto Almighty Yahweh. But what do we give unto him? What is our offering to Yah? Is our oil sweet smelling or is it stagnant? Does it stink? Is it tainted? Hallelujah. We must have the oil of his anointing. And that anointing separates us, as I had told from the beginning of this teaching. This is the oil they use when they anoint Ahara. Or when they anoint the bed of Yisrael. Or the place where the offerings went forth. It took this oil of anointing, which is this, this type of separation, Yisrael, that we are set apart, that we are clean, that we are pure. That the odor that is given unto Almighty Yahweh, it enlightens him. He enjoys the odor, the smell of it, Yisrael. So they brought forth even the spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense or the fragrance. That's another thing about the oil. When it came to producing this anointing oil, it had to be measured out, an exact measurement. And the spices, you just couldn't just throw anything in there. You couldn't throw a, a pinch of this and a dash of that. There was a specific measurement of, of, of what should go into the oil. That it may send forth this savory incense or this, this smell, this fragrance when it's open. When the oil is on one, everybody knows it. When the horror walked upon them, his sons or whomever, everybody knew why, because they could smell the oils. Even what we have today, the essential oils, whether it's in a fragrance, when someone puts a little bit, it don't take much when you got the real stuff. When someone walks by, you know that they're wearing something, they're wearing that smell. It, it catches your attention. It catches your undivided attention. It, it causes you to turn around and look, and I wonder what he's got on, what he's wearing, or what she's wearing. That is what the oil does. It sets us apart. Two or three people can pass you wearing different things and you know it. Why? Because they are set apart by the fragrance, by the oil, by the smell, Yisrael. Move me to, to Exodus chapter 30 because we need this fragrance. We need this oil of anointing. We need to be single out. We need to be different from the world. Our fragrance should be different from the world. Our odor should be different from the, the world. Our ruach should be different from the world, Yisrael. It says in verse 30, chapter 30, verse 22. It says, Moreover, Yahweh spoke unto Moshe. He says, To take also to you, it says, principal spices. That is, Pacific spices, spices above spices, of pure myrrh, he says 500 shackles, and of sweet cinnamon, he said half as much, even 250 shackles of sweet calmness, 250 shackles. So these are all the things, the principal spices, and the things that he wanted to go into the oil for the anointing. And he said, and of cassava, 500 shackles. After the shackle of the Kodesh place. So even the measurement represents everything even concerning the Bayat or the Kodesh place of Almighty Yahweh. The cinnamon, that amount, the, the incense, the spices, the myrrh, all that has represents. A representation concerning the bed or the Kodesh place. 
And he says, also, the oil of olive in him. He wants all this, Israel. This foretells even the anointing of Almighty oil to the house of Israel, that everything is measured out exact and precise. Yahweh just doesn't throw anything together. When he made these bodies, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. We weren't just thrown together. Everything was precise. Adam, precise. Everything about you, precise. No matter what the world says. When Yahweh made us, he made you precise. He made you peculiar. Above all people. Everything about us should be different and peculiar. Yes, right, yeah. He goes on to say in verse 25, the oil is very important, Yes, right. Don't think that oil is not important. It is very important. The anointing oil, it's all important. The oil for the burning of the menorah, it's important. Because this foretells everything that happens in this life, in our bodies, what we should have and what we need. He goes on and says, in verse 25, And you shall make it an oil or sheeshman of Kodesh ointment. Kodesh ointment. We know that Kodesh means it is set apart. Yeah. It is used for one particular thing. And we are set apart. Yeah. We're no longer our own. Because Yahshua has bought us with his dom. So we should be set apart. He said it should be a Kodesh ointment set apart, an ointment compound after the art of apicary. What that means is just, it's just the main compounds. Or there was specific ingredients that was needed to make this precious oil. And it shall be a Kodesh anointing oil. It should be a Kodesh anointing oil. It's anointing oil that is set aside. Don't you know we're anointed? We are anointed with this oil. Yes, right, Yah. Yahweh has anointed us with this precious oil by Yahshua HaMashiach. There is no other way that we are accepted before him but by this anointing, the, oil, the anointing of his Ruach HaKodesh. Turn with me to uh, James. Yaakov, James chapter 5, verse 7. Yahweh has set us apart, Yisrael. It should be these things that sets us apart. It should be his ruach, his anointing that sets us apart from the world. It should cause the light of understanding, the light of his hookmah to shine upon our face. And we so many times here concerning the city that's set up on the hill. You think they had electricity back in those days? It took oil. It took oil, Yisrael. It takes oil. Hallelujah. Even when Yahshua, when he was anointed before he entered into the, uh, the sepulcher, he was anointed with sweet-smelling fragrance of oils. Every time you hear of one being anointed, whether it was a high calling, or whether one was anointed to be a king or a messenger, it was all this anointing oil that was set apart. So you just can't put any kind of oil. We just can't have any kind of oils just right here. We must have this oil, the anointing of here. It says in, in Yaakov, James chapter 5, verse 7. He says, be patient, therefore, brethren. To the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. For behold, the husband man does wait for the precious fruit of the earth. And has long patience for it. Until he receive the early and the latter rain. What's the saying? What does this have to do with the oil? One thing about oil, even in machinery you have to have the right type of oil. That the machine will last that it may endure, that it may do the job that it has been built to do. Some of the instruments that we have or the tools around here, the backhoe takes a certain type of oil. Transmission takes a certain type of oil. And sometimes they have what's called tractive fluid that is somewhat, you can use it in a little bit of everything, but you can't use it in everything. We were discussing even uh, the two-stroke engines on the weed eaters. You have to make sure that the ratio is right 
It'll run. And it may run well, but it won't last. So we must have even the oil of Yahweh's anointing that we may endure, that we may last. Even the battle that we stay in the battle that we fight Israel. So this is what this is concerning, even our patience. Verse 8. He said, and be you also patient. There's one that is able to stand, he's able to endure, he's willing to endure. Be you also patient. He says, and establish your heart, your love. We must be established, Israel. We must be rooted, we must be grounded, that nothing moves us. That nothing allowed this flame of our menorah, of the Ruach, the Ruach came of Almighty Yahweh go out in our lives. That we are able to last, not, even, not just in the easy days, but in those night seasons. That this menorah, this light, that it burn bright, Israel. It is very important. That's what the five foolish did not have. They didn't have the oil to last through the night season. When Yahshua or when the bridegroom, when the bridegroom came, they did not have the oil. So we must be patient. Our hearts must be established for what? The coming. Why? Because the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach, it draws nigh. His coming, it draws nigh, Yisrael. Do we have the right oils? Do we have the oil of his anointing? This fragrance that is sweet and it's a smelling fragrance to his nostril? Or are we just trying to put anything in these lamps just to try to get by? To try to fool you. You know, there's a vast difference in the smell of diesel fluid and kerosene. It smells different. They burn different. Gasoline is just a type of oil. It's just been, it's just a, a product or byproduct of, of crude oil. It's still an oil. There's a vast difference. But Yahweh, he's not going to accept anything. And just anything or any type of oil or any spirit, as we would say, or ruach, it's not going to work when it comes time for us to be tried and when our endurance is tested. We need the oil that we last, Yisrael. And if I may use the word survive, because we must survive, we must endure until the end of all things. So he's talking about being patient, being ready and having this patience, this endurance. And then making sure in verse 8 that our lair or our heart or our mind are established and are ready for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach it draws nigh. In verse 9, he said, grudge not one against another. We should not have grudges. One against another, Yisrael. No, really. Arts. What is the art? It's basically you have nothing. It's not worth even holding on to. No, no. It's not even worth the, the time thinking about it. But you might well go to one another, go to the out, go to the and just get it right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because one that holds a grudge, he does not have this anointing that Yahweh speaks about in Torah. And if you have these kind of grudges, as Torah is explaining, you're not going to last in time of battle. Because it's those little things that we think will not destroy the vine that destroys the vine. Hallelujah. Torah talks about the foxes, but the, 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 the little bugs and, and aphids and things like that, they destroy the vine also. He said, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Condemned. What is that? Just simply damned. Lest you be damned. Lest you be caught by the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach and you're not ready and you're not prepared. He said, behold, the judge stands before the door. He is ready. When you're in a courtroom and you're sitting, you're waiting, you're waiting for that door to open because the judge, he stands at the door. Once he walk in, that's it. It's time for the trial to take place. Once he walks in that door, it's time for the trial to take place. So Yahshua, is he not the judge? He stands at the door. He's ready, Israel, but are we ready? Do we have arts? Do we have things that will keep us from being prepared for this coming? He said, the judge, he stands before the door. He said, take, my brother, 
the Nabi, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yahweh, for an example of suffering and affliction, affliction and patience. If we look through Torah, we see the examples of the Nabi, of Yisrael, and their suffering, their enduring, and their impatience. He's, it's telling unto us, Yisrael, that we must take heed to those things, that we observe those examples of suffering that has been given towards us because they stood and they waited on the promises of Almighty Yahweh and with patience. Verse 11, behold, we count them happy. Does it say happy? Yes. Does your, your Torah, does it say happy? Yes. Which what? Endure. Endure. We must count ourselves happy. They counted themselves happy because they were able to endure. Because they had the root up. They had what was needed that they may last. Those five wise that had what was needed. Sometimes you will hear the expression, the double portion or double portion. They had not only that which was in the lamp, but they had some also in a vessel that they may keep that lamp burning. That when they trimmed their lamps, they made the wick ready, but they were able to refill those lamps, that their light not go out, Yisrael. The Torah talk about double. Many times it talks about double. But there's only a few times where it expresses that in an anointing or an endowing or something being passed on. It also talks about the portion that was given. That was just the riches that was allotted to the firstborn. Many times, everyone got a little something out of the house after the Avat, you know, passed away. He left something. But the firstborn, or the heir, he would get a double portion. He would get twice the amount. Yes, right, yeah. So what is it going to take for us to stand in this hour? We must, first of all, have the oil. But we also need that extra or that reserve that is needed, that keeps us. We must have those things that needed us to take us beyond those things that we see now. Because there is more coming. Did not the Torah just say that? He said the end is not yet. We may have enough to take us through what we're enduring, but there are times, there's things that are coming, Israel, y'all, it's going to take more than what we have. We don't have enough. How do we get what we need? We must buy. We must buy. We must purchase. We don't want to buy the truth. We don't want to purchase this gold. Hallelujah. So all this, what I'm speaking, it will all tie in Israel, y'all. If we will shema, if we will hear, if we will open our mind, if we will listen, because this is needed in this hour, that we're able to endure, and that we overcome, that we may last. I will get to that even concerning this double portion. You know, we drive up to the McDonald's or Burger King, they have the Big Mac. They have the double Whopper with cheese, do they not? It has twice the meat. So if you've been getting the single Whopper, the junior Whopper, everybody know about that, do they not? I do. Sometimes that junior Whopper is just not enough, so you want to get the double. Got two slices in there. And sometimes it's more than enough, you don't finish it all, but yet the junior is not enough. Or they have what you call super size, they double, double your size, instead of getting a small, you get a large. And when large wasn't big enough, they had the extra large. So we need more than what we have, Israel, that we may endure, that we are filled. Running over, as, a, as we would say, with the Ruach HaKodesh. Sometimes they play the lottery. We shouldn't do that kind of thing. We shouldn't bet. We shouldn't gamble. But they hit that ball right. Sometimes it may double the money, depending on what you're playing for. You get more of the amount, more of the same thing, whatever it may be. So that's what the lot or the portion that was given unto the eldest son or the firstborn was a double portion. That he had twice the amount of everyone else. And it was a lot, it was given unto him. Don't you know that these things that even I'm speaking is given unto us, Israel? 
that Yahweh has given it because it is our lot. It is our portion to receive that double amount, that reward in full, Yisrael. You know, even in my study, I recall that even when there was a situation where there was a man that had two wives, he hated the one, despised one, but he loved the other. Even when he had his sons, the Torah says, it is right for you to give that double portion to the, to the son of the one that you hated. And that, to us, that don't seem to make much sense, does it? But even if we would look at Yahshua HaMashiach, is he not the firstborn? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was even the first one to be raised from, from, from the grave, the first begotten of Almighty Yahweh. What does that leave us? Hallelujah. Where are we? Are we the one that has been despised? That's something kind of worth looking into. But yet we have our possession. We have our portion, Yisrael. And Yahweh has given us double. Not only that, but Torah even talks about even our sin. In a certain part of the Torah. He said, will we receive double for our sins? For our iniquity? So he's going to take a double portion of his anointing, Yisrael, to take us through and to take us beyond what we see. Are we sleeping? Have we fallen asleep and we have not purchased? We have not bought the Torah. We have not bought the truth in its fullness, Israel. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me move on. Todia. Todia. I was at verse 11. Yaakov, James. He said, Behold, we count them happy which endure. He said, you have heard of the patience of Eo. We've heard of the patience of Eo. It was all the things that he went through and encountered. The Torah says he did not charge Almighty Yahweh foolishly. Did he need reproving? Did they, excuse me, did they have to remind him and constantly remind him? Sure they did. Sure they did. But yet he stood even to the end of that thing. And what does Torah say at the end of that chapter? That Eo, he was even better off than he was. At the beginning of all those things. He was better off. He had more. How much? Is that double? He had twice the amount. Because he endured. We must endure, Yisrael. It's vital that we endure. But we must have the substance. Eob have substance. Even when it there was time, his mind was to the point where he had to weigh out his situation. Against what Yahweh had already told him and what he has experienced. But yet he held true, Yisrael. He held true. He said, I count it happy to endure. He says, we have heard the patience of Eo and have seen the end or his end purpose of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh, even in that situation, he said, the Torah says he is very pitiful. He understands. He knows. His Ahava is poured out amongst us. That doesn't always mean that he's going to lessen the trial or the tribulation, but he gives us the ability to endure and to go through this affliction and to go through afflictions and to go through trials. He says, the purpose of Yahweh, why that is very pitiful, and he is full of husset, or his husset is tender. Verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, he says, swear not, neither by the Shemayim or by the Olam, the heavens or the earth, neither by any other oath. And basically what that is saying, you'd be surprised when people in different, in certain situations, we have done it. Oh, I promise if you would get me out of this, that I would do right. We're delivered, we're brought out of it, we don't do right. That's an oath. You made a promise and you have broken it. So he said, be careful when you swear, when you make an oath, Yisrael, or to the Shemaims, which is the, earth, this, the heavens, neither to the earth, which is Olam, neither by any other oath, but let your eyes or your yes be yes, and your nay be nay. Why? Because any other thing besides that, it is sin. It is polluted. It's, it's unclean. It, it's, it's untrue. 
Let your yes be yes and your nay be nay, lest you fall into hypocrisy. Verse 13. He says, as any among you, Torah says, let him pray. Let him seek Almighty Yahweh. Let his palah or his cry or his prayer not be hindered. He said, let him pray. Is any merry that are jovial, that are happy, full of excitement? The Torah says, let him sing to Helium. Let him sing songs. And verse 14, he said, if there are any sick among you, let him call for the Zakain, the elders of the congregation. You know, many times when we're sick, and that's more so one being sick just in their physical body, you're weak. You, you need strength. You need perseverance. Sometimes we need an extra push, Israel. Yeah. But we tend not to do this. We don't call for the elders. We go to the internet. We go to the TV. We go to uh, feeding our greedy flesh. As they say, binge eating. That's of the world. We find every avenue, but beside what Torah said, Torah said you get a Zarkay, you get an elder, you get one that is experienced, one that his life holds true to what he says. You see his works. You see her works. She's like, even with discipline, with benign, with understanding and wisdom. He said, you call for the elders of the congregation, congregation. And the Torah says to let them, let them pray over him. What? Anointing. Anointing. With the Ruach HaKodesh. With the oil of Almighty Yahweh that has been set aside. Not just any oil. We have oil. This oil is Kodesh. It's been set aside. You just don't take this and just use it for anything. It's for the Bayer. It's for Yisrael. And Mr. Bayer, she's done this many years. She'll bring up a little oil and she'll just set it somewhere. Or she'll ask for Akim to set it somewhere here. Just so it will receive of the anointing that come from the roster, from the Ruach, from the, the, the man, from the, the Malat, the messenger of Almighty Yahweh. And she, she does that continuously. She does that. Why? That it's set apart. She don't take that oil and just use it for everything. She's not throwing it in there her wood stove to help start the fire. It is for the anointing. That the sweet melon fragrance of Yah's Ruach HaKodesh that it may be used for the anointing. He said, anointing him with oil in the name of Almighty Yahweh. That's what we should do. We should anoint, when we are anointing, we should anoint with the oil in the name of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 15. And it says this, that the prayer of Imuna faith shall deliver. Did it say deliver? And it say might deliver. Will almost deliver. It says it will. It will. It will deliver. It shall deliver the weary. And we get weary. We get faint. All we have to do is just call for the Zakane. That's all you have to do. Zakane, you're wrong, y'all. I, I, I need some anointing. I need you just, just, just anoint me with the oil, the oil of gladness, the oil of, of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. I need to be restored. I need to be refilled. Why? Because when you burn the light, you have to have oil. The oil doesn't last forever. Not this oil that we use. It doesn't last forever. So it has to be refilled. There has to be a portion. There has to be enough. He says, the, the prayer of the faithful, the faith shall deliver the weary. And Yahweh shall, what? Raise him up. We must be raised. We need to be raised. Many times we're looking down our troubles. We're worried about our family. We're worried about tomorrow. We're worried about the future. If your eyes are not set that your eyes control all things, you will be let down. You will go into a state of depression. Why? Because there's nothing in this world to live for. It's all vanity. It's all vain. Everything we have worked for for to this time, you thought you was going to have something, you still don't have nothing. You have nothing. He said that the prayer shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, the Torah says they should be forgiven of him. Just doing that, just obeying that, that's simple. Going to a Zakane, Zakane, I need anointing, Zakane. What's wrong, what's the problem? Uh, 
I, I just need to be lifted up, Zakim. Would you anoint? Would you anoint me? And Torah said, if there's any sin, it would be forgiven of him. Why? Because he had obeyed the Torah of Yahweh, gone to the Zakim, and he said, let, didn't he? Let him be anointed with oil. That's all you have to do, Israel. It, it's that easy. Try it. Do it. It is that easy. Just obey the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, anointing him with oil, and that even any sin that he had committed, that it may be forgiven him, verse 16. So the oil is important, isn't it? What would be without the oil? We need the oil. 16. He says also to confess your faults one unto another and pray one for another that you may be healed, that you may be made whole. It says the effectual fervent prayer of the Siddiq, of the righteous now, not of the hypocrite, but the righteous man, it avails much. It, it is worth a great price. It is needed in the house of Israel. But we must have this anointing, of the, or we must have those that are able to anoint, those that are filled with the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. I want to move over to uh, 1 Samuel, Israel. Very important. We need the oil. We need those that stand with the anointing of Almighty Yahweh to anoint us all. Hallelujah. Because without his oil, we won't be glad. We won't be happy. You will not have the rock of understanding. You will not have perseverance. You won't be able to endure anything. So give us this oil, Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Anoint us, Yah. Pour out your anointing, Yah. Hallelujah. Are we all in one place? You're listening? You, you, you're, we should all be in one place in Yahshua HaMashiach. In one mind. That we may see, receive the outpour of the Ruach HaKodesh. Isn't that what we came for? To be filled today? Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. We must have the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh, Israel. We must have it. We have to. His anointing. It speaks here in Samuel 11. And Samuel said unto Yeshai, I hear all of your children. He was there to find a malak, a king, to stand before the people. Chosen of Almighty Yahweh. He wasn't looking for the brownest, the strongest. He, wanted, he was looking for the one with the attributes that Yahweh desired at this time. He said, I hear all your children. He said, there remain yet the youngest. And behold, he is, he's a shepherd. He's herding the sheep. And Samuel said unto Yeshai, send and fetch him. For we will not sit down until he comes. So his work at that time, he went there to what? To just to anoint. It was important. He had to be anointed. He could not be a king over the heritage of Yah without being anointed. Had to be anointed. We must be anointed, Israel. Are we not kings? Are we not Nabi? That's because of the anointing of Almighty Yahweh. It's not because we live our lives so pure before Yah. It's only because of his choosing. He chose us and he has anointed us with his Ruach HaKodesh. And he has set us apart. He has set us apart. So this one, he has set apart. Let me read on. He said, for we will not even sit down until he comes here. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now this describes him. Now he was ruddy. And with all of a beautiful countenance, he was a, his countenance was beautiful. And he was tough to look on. And Yahweh said, arise. He spoke unto, he, he spoke and said unto Samuel to arise and anoint him for this is he. He said, anoint this one. This is the one I want to leave the bed of Yisrael. This is the one I want 
to be over my people. We know if we will call Yahshua HaMashiach and Yachahan as he immersed, the Torah says that as he looked upon the, crowd, uh, upon the crowd, he saw the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh ascend upon Yahshua HaMashiach like a dove. Did he not say that? Was that not a type of the anointing? So was he not chosen out of that crowd to be the one? We are chosen, Israel, out of the crowd, our families, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, to be the one, to be the anointed of Almighty Yahweh, to be the one that we take this message of his Ruach and our life, that we are an example before the whole world. And it says in verse 13, Then Samuel, he took the horn of oil. Now that horn of oil, it was set apart to anoint only this king or this one. And Samuel, he took the horn of oil and he anointed in the midst of his brethren, all those that was there. With all those that was in the midst, were they able? Could they not lead a people or a nation? I believe they all could have been capable. But yet this is the one that Yahweh had chosen. And this is the one that Yahweh wanted to anoint with this horn or this oil in the horn. And it says this, and the Ruach of Yahweh, the Ruach, the breath, what we would call, quote, the spirit, unquote, of Yahweh. This has great connotations, Israel. That's why we must have the ears to hear and the heart to perceive what Yahweh is saying unto us in this generation. Yahshua, he had the anointing, the Ruach ascended upon him. He was anointed, and also this one was anointed of Almighty Yahweh, Dawid. It says that when he was anointed, that the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh came upon Dawid. From that day forward, from that day, from that day of his anointing, even though he was chosen, I believe even from the beginning, yet it took the anointing, it took the anointing of that oil that the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh may rest upon him from that day, and it said forward. So we must have the anointing. We can't say we have the anointing of Yah and we have not been chosen of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We don't have the anointing of Almighty Yahweh if we don't continue in his mishpah and his Torah. We must endure. We must continue. He said, from that time forward, so Samuel, he rose up, and he went on his journey to Ramah. But, look what it says in verse 14. Not only can Yahweh give or anoint one, but he also can take his Ruach away. I recall the old song, he says, do not take your Kodesh Ruach from me. It's also Torah, but restore, Dawid cried the same, very same thing. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, your Yasha, and renew, restore, refill your Ruach within me. We must be restored, we must be filled, Israel. That's the only way we're going to stand. So verse 14 says this. But the Ruach of Yahweh departed from Samuel. He took it from him. He took it from him. He made his vessel empty. That his Ruach dwelt with him no more. And what happened? This is what happened to us when we're not filled. When Yahweh takes away his Ruach. He dries you up, makes you empty. You don't want, want to walk according to his statutes and his commandments. This is what happens. It says, when he took his Ruach and it departed from Samuel or from Saul, that an evil Ruach, did it say from Yahweh? It didn't come from Shatan. It was Yahweh. It was the hand of Yahweh. It says an evil Ruach from Yahweh troubled him. It troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, his servants, you, you think they were not able to see that? You don't think they knew? You don't think one is able to discern the Ruach of Yahweh upon one? Yeah. And when one is filled with troubling? And it all comes from Almighty Yahweh. So we're not hiding in the congregation. Yahweh shall find you out, Israel. So the servants even said, they noticed, they said unto him, behold, now. It says an evil ruach from Yahweh troubles you. Yeah. Why? Because Yahweh took his ru he took his anointing, he took his ruach from him. Mm -hmm. So restore unto us, Almighty Yahweh, the joy 
this expectation of your promises. And take not your code as Ruach from us, because he will do it. He will do it, Israel. He will do it. And what is left for one? Just troubles, troubles, anguish of love, heartache, sorrow. He has no tigva until the end. He's not able to endure. I want to talk a little just about the end. Some about the end here, Israel. That we understand the time that we're in. That even after all I have spoken, have taught so far, that we understand our need for the anointing, our need for the Ruach HaKodesh, that which set us apart from everyone else. It keeps us, it preserves us, it gives us the strength, the ability to endure, to persevere, to fight. Don't let no one fool you, you have to fight. Oh, the fight is Almighty Yahweh's. It is Almighty Yahweh's. The victory, as a matter of fact, is yours. But you still have to fight. You still have to make yourself ready. So I want to talk about the end a little at this point in time. Matthews, Matthew, chapter 25, verse 1. This is also concerning, as I talked about the five wise, the five foolish. And there was also other parables that were spoken. But all those things that were spoken, it was concerning, as we have heard recently, the talents that was given. Yeah. All those things entailed the end time, or the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh, and what it would be like in the last times, the last days. So it says here, Then shall the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, no one goes forth to meet the bridegroom unless they believe that they're ready. Is that not right? I mean, you don't want to go without the right attire. So they had the right garment on. They all looked alike. But yet five wise were wise and five were foolish. You could not tell them apart. which took their lamps and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, this is a serious situation. Because just as the one that stands at the door for judgment, Yahshua HaMashiach, he is the bridegroom. And he awaits his bride. That's his just reward. The bride is a just reward of the bridegroom. Why? Because Yah gives unto every man, every other man, that portion or that gift of a bride. It's not that man should be alone. That's why he made Eve in the beginning of all things. Because that's what Yahweh desired for man. So they made themselves ready. They cleaned themselves up. They prepared themselves. All of them looked alike. Five wise, five foolish. To meet the bridegroom, verse 2. Five of them were wise. And five of them were were foolish. Verse 3. And they that were foolish, this is how you can tell, tell, tell them apart. And they that were foolish, they took their lamps. They took their lamps. They had oil in their lamps, but they just the lamps now. But they took no oil. They took no oil with them. Remember the song, Tay Yahshua with you everywhere you go. Oh, take Yahshua with you everywhere you go, in the store, in your home, wherever it may be. We must take Yahshua with us. It's not enough to speak the word and we don't live it. We must take Yahshua with us. We can pretend and be hypocrites all you want. But one thing about a hypocrite, when they go out there, they don't take Yahshua with them. So we have to take Yahshua with us. We have to take the oil with us, Yisrael. That's what divides the house between the five wise and the five foolish. Because the foolish didn't take any oil. They had oil, 
but they did not have the reserve. You have to have reserve. In time of fam famine, you have to have reserve. Torah shows us what has to happen. Because there's a time of famine that is coming. There's a time of darkness that is coming. Matter of fact, we're in it. Where's the reserve? Where's the substance that we have put back? What have we saved? You may have money in your pocket, but that doesn't last very long. There are not too many people that carry a whole lot of cash in their pockets anymore. They have bank accounts, so they have a little place in the house where they put a little money, put something back. And the Torah talks about the slugger, to be wise. And behold the ant. Watch the ant. See what the ant does. Many times we try to get rid of the ants. They're just minding their business. You step in there. Their, their ant hill, they got something for you. Now they come all up in the house in the yard, that's a different story. They can stay, you know. But if we were ever watch them, you would see them, they're always working. They're not about foolishness. It's all about work. Work and more work. Because Yahweh has placed something in that little thing that you step on every day, you don't know you stepped on it, to prepare for the time of hard times, to prepare for the winter. They're always storing. They're always making sure that the queen has what she needs and that she is well fed and taken care of and guarded. And they're always working. They don't have their heels kicked up in front of a computer. They're not sitting in AC. They're working. And they work until they die. That's their lot. That's their reward. To work to the fullness of their life. Is that what we are looking for? Is that what we want? Just to die? To work and just die. Yahweh has given us something more excellent and profound. He has promised us the Melku, his kingdom. It's a place where there's no more tears, no more crying. We hear, we've heard that all of our, our lives. But are we making ourselves ready? What are we working for? Are we putting back the reserve? If we're not doing that, we're foolish. You're just wasting your time. You're just a dog that's barking and have no bite. You're spinning your wheels, making a lot of noise. It might be impressive, but you're not going anywhere. Hallelujah. So what set them apart, the Torah says here in Matitia 25 and 3, that they that were foolish, they took their lamps, but they took no oil with them. This is concerning the end time, the Melchu. Let us remember that. This whole chapter, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. But the wise, they took in their vessels with their lamps. So not only did they have their lamps, but the Torah says that they had the vessels. They had the vessels of oil. Do not Torah talks about different types of vessels. You have vessels that are honored, that are Worth much, there are some priceless. Then you have those that are dishonored. They're not worth very much, if, if anything at all. But yet there's still vessels in the house of Almighty Yah. We're all vessels in the house. We're all of importance to the miracle, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. But are we filled with oil? Do we have the oil? Do we have what is needed to persevere, to endure, and to overcome? So the wise, they took the oil in their vessels. Are we not vessels? That's all we are, are vessels. We have been made to be endowed or filled with the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. That's what we are for. And then when these old bodies or these vessels, when they pass, then the Ruach returns back unto Almighty Yahweh. It returns because it's his anyway. It returns to him. So we're vessels. So we must be filled with this oil. We can't just be running around with lamps in Israel. We can't just run around, as it would say, just tooting our horns. Or we all have a lamp and it burns bright. It looks nice. It looks nice. It really does. It lights you way. You can see where you're going at night. But you got to have more than just lamp in your, oil in your lamp. The vessel has to be filled with oil. We have to be filled with the anointing. We have to be filled with the persevering of Almighty Yahweh. 
And I'm not talking about any cheap stuff. The oil that Torah talks about is somewhat priceless. The oil that was poured upon Yahshua's feet at his time, he said that his oil was given before my burial, for my preparation for death. But there was one that was looking, he wanted it for the price because he knew he could make money. He knew he could make money. It was worth a lot of money. Is Yahweh worth anything to us, Yahshua, his dom? Is it worth anything to us, Israel? Then we should be willing to fight for it. We should desire to be filled with the precious anointing, the real Hakadesh of Almighty Yahweh. And it's more than just one running around with a lamp. He has to be filled. The vessel must be filled. Hallelujah. So again, verse 4, the wise, they had their vessels with their lamps. Very important. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, it says he tarried, he waited patiently for the time. He waited patiently. And Torah says they all, all, did it say all? Does it say all? Cole, not nine of them, not just eight of them. It says they all slumbered and slept. Well, Yahshua, at that time, he was making preparation. He went to pray. Were there not his disciples with him, his disciplined ones? Did they not slumber? Were they not asleep? And Yahweh said, that's all right. They could not wait. But yet here we find they're all doing the same thing. The five wise were asleep. And they slumbered. The five foolish, they were asleep. And they slumbered. You could not tell them apart. They all looked the same. Verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. There was a palat, there was a cry. There was, was a loud noise. The trumpet blew, it sounded. A cry went forth. Behold, do we recall the message, behold? A simple message. They didn't just look up, okay, it's the bride. No, they wanted to see him. They don't want to see if, he, if he's nervous or if he's smiling, if, if he's resolute, if he's ready. I was there at one time, waiting for my bride. Was I nervous? Sure I was. Was there excitement? My heart pounding short was, but yet there was a resolve that I'm going to go through this. There, there, there are weddings that take place right up to they get ready to put the ring on and they, they turn them down because they can't take it. It happens all the time. They make their preparations and something happens. One of them. But yet Yahshua, he, he waits patiently. He's at the door. He's waiting. He's not going to turn down. He's not going to Drop the situation. Why? Because he's awaiting his allot, that which has been promised unto him, the bride. We're the bride. There was a cry went forth at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom comes. And he says, go out to meet him. And it's time. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to awaken out of sleep. Oziah, Yisrael, you slumber, wake up. And it's time to meet the bridegroom. And all of his splendor and his power. And the brightness of his coming. Then all of the virgins, so it says all of the virgins, all ten, they rose. They trimmed their lamps in haste to prepare and to make them ready. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. We have no oil. That's a sad thing. To wait until the end, until your day to pass or to move on from this life, it's more than just the end of the world. Basically, that is the end of our, if I may say this, little worlds. Because we, we, we base everything surrounding us. We're in the center of it all. It's too late to wait till you're on your deathbed and you're dying. It's too late. You have to have oil in your vessel. You have to have oil in your vessel. So the, the foolish said, give us of your oil. Just give us some. Just enough to light our lamps. 
for us have gone out. Have our lights gone out? Have our lamps gone out? Have we trimmed the lamp as I have read earlier? Have we made it ready? Are we taking care of the menorah, the Ruach King of Almighty Yahweh that dwells in our earthly tabernacle? Are we watching and make sure they all stay lit? Because if one goes out, if one Ruach King goes out, it defeats the purpose of the other six. So we make, must make sure that they all are burning. Whether we realize it or not, each candle defies each Ruach. But yet they all are one because they are on one manure. It's all one part. Yet you have to have all seven of them that the beauty of that come to its fluoration. And they have to burn bright. I know ours is, if you can see it, um, the, the, the bulbs, it's got bulbs in it. But we have those that burn oil also. But they will not continue to burn if you don't keep applying the oil. So the flow of the oil, it never stops. It can't cease. Just as the Dhamma Yashua Hamashiach, it's not dried up. It's still alive. It's still flowing. It still washes. It still cleanses. So we must have that in this hour, even the fire of his anointing Israel, that we can continue. And you can't have one without the other. You have to have all seven. They have to be ekai. We have to be one. He said, they said before our lamps, they have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so. They said, we will not. Were they wise? Were they wise? So someone foolish, they come unto you. They want of your oil. They want of the substance of, of the amuna to take that from you. You, don't, you can't give it to them. Can't give it to him. You cannot step out of the will of Almighty Yahweh or transgress the Torah to appease the foolish. You can't do it, Yisrael. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough. They knew it wouldn't be enough. They knew they had just enough to make it through that time period. Unless there's not enough. For us and you. So it would not be any good. If I give you some of my oil, your lamp will burn, but it'll go out before the allotted time. My lamp will go out before the allotted time. So if they would have shared the oil, it would not have been any good or any tough for any of them. The oil, the lamps would have been no, no tough. No, no essence to them. They all would have perished. So should we give our oil, or oil? Should we give up the Ruach HaKodesh for a, a piece of the world? Pleasure for a season? No, Yisrael. We cannot give it. It said at least there will be not enough for us all, for us and you. But they gave them an instruction. They said, but go, rather, to them that sell the oil. It's too late. It's too late. Why? Because the bridegroom cometh. Go rather to them that sell the oil and buy for yourself. Why, did not, why didn't they do that from the beginning? Because they didn't have the wisdom, first of all, but they didn't have what was needed to even possess it, to buy it, to take it. Yahweh said, for us to buy of him, did he not say that? Buy the truth, yeah. buy the gold, we must buy the oil. Yeah, we must give up our own desires and those things we think are of great wealth. We must lay all those things aside for Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. The young ruler was not willing to do that. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, wise, the, the foolish, what, they were not willing to do that. Yeah. They didn't have what was needed. Why? Because they did not purchase. We must purchase. Don't let nobody fool you. You have to purchase it. You purchase it by your life. You, you purchase it by your will, Give it all that up for the milkuk for the kingdom. For the will of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah, sure, he did nothing of his own. He did what was required of him by Abba Yahweh, and he did it willingly. 
That's how you buy the oil. That's how you become full with the Ruach HaKodesh. You must first of all be willing to give up all that you have and follow Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So he told them to go, buy to, them, go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. For yourselves. You got to do it on your own. For yourselves. For yourselves. Mama's not going to do it for you. Daddy's not going to do it for you. Your cousins, your uncles, friends, they're not going to do it for you. You must buy it for yourself. You must do it on your own, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. The hasid of Yahweh is more than enough, Yisrael, to do those things that are necessary for us to possess this oil, to possess his anointing, that we are filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, that we may endure, that the light not go out. And when they went, in verse 10, while they went to buy, they wanted to give up themselves now, because the time is tight. They know that it's close. So let us, let us do what is necessary. Let's hurry up and do that now. That we can buy. Let us give up our, our desires and our lusts and our will. And, and, and hurry up and go buy because Yahshua is coming. There's no time for that, Yisrael. The time that is allotted for us, the Torah says, is now. Right now. This very moment. This very second. Now is the acceptable time of Almighty Yahweh. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week to get it right. Well, I know the things I need to do. You better do it now. Because you don't know when your time. The son said, Well, I, I, I don't know. Well, you know because you know because you're ready. You're not ready, you're not going to know. It can happen at an instant, it'll flash right before your eyes. There are people that are dying now. And they don't even know they're dead. It's just a reality of the situation, Israel. So Yahweh has allotted unto us what? Time. That we can prepare, make ourselves ready for the end. For the end. For the end. So how are we doing with that, Israel? How much oil is in your vessel? Do you have enough? You don't have enough. You don't have enough. You don't have enough. You fight that with all this in you because you don't, you don't have enough. If you had enough, you wouldn't have to fight it. You don't have enough. We don't have enough. We need to be filled, Israel. So while they went to buy, the bridegroom, he came. He did not tarry. He came when it was time for him to come. And they that were ready went in with him unto the marriage. And the door. Yeah. Who's the door? It's not Yahshua. Yeah. The way, the truth, the light. He's also the door. And when, when the door is shut, can any man open it? No man can open it. When it's open, can anyone shut it? No. But it said the door was shut. The door was shut. Afterwards came also the other five virgins saying, Rabbi, Master, open unto us. But he answered and said unto them, Truly I say unto you. I don't want to hear this said unto me. No. You think that's going to happen just then when Yahshua comes? It happens every day. It comes a time for us to make a choice. Yahweh is not going to make you do anything. There has to be a desire. He gives you the tools that are necessary. And if you'll be willing and obedient, then you will eat the tub of the lamb. He's not going to stop you from lying. You know you're a liar. You got to stop it. You stealing, you thieving. He's not going to stop you from that. You have to stop it. Committing adultery, you're doing unseemly things and you know you're doing it. He's not going to stop you. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You have to stop it. Well, how do we do that, Zakir and Yeramiah? By taking heed to the mystery of the Torah. What we're here today, we must make ourselves ready. We must get rid of all that trash that we are filled with, that we may be endowed, that we may be filled with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Because without it, we cannot stand. We cannot stand. 
We're not going to stand the trial. We're not going to stand tribulation, great tribulations. He says, truly, I say unto you, of a truth, and it is certain, it is settled. He said, I don't yada. I don't know you. Who are you? He says, I don't know you. That would hurt the love of any Israel or any wife or husband turn around and say, I don't know you. Who are you? Where you come from? I'm, I'm, I've been with you for 20 years. You don't know me? No, I don't know you. You're not. We don't want Yahshua to say that to us. He doesn't know us. He said, I know you're not. And this is our exhortation in verse 13. He says, to watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour. Did he lie? He told the truth. We don't know the day nor the hour. Wherein the Son of Man comes. We don't know the day nor the hour, so we must make ourselves ready. We must make our hearts ready. We must open our minds and our levim unto Yahshua HaMashiach that we may be filled. He wants us filled. We have to be filled. I know I keep repeating that because it is that important, Israel. We cannot go on with what we have because it's not enough. We must be filled. They had the lamps. We have our lamps. We have the, the testimony. But do we have the oil? Do we have the resolve to continue despite what comes our way? Let us move on. Let us move on. I want to back up some in Torah to Tehillim. Tehillim chapter 119, verse 33. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we would examine Tehillim, there was many things that, that we dealt with and many things he said. Even in the Tehillim of the songs that he wrote and sung. But one of the things above all things to him, is that he wanted to know his latter time, his latter end, that all was well with his nephesh. So he spoke on those things concerning the end. So I just want to read just a few verses, a little out of Tehillim, concerning the end. Hallelujah. He said in Tehillim 119, verse 33, Teach me, instruct me, Walk me through this step by step. Teach me, O Yahweh, the way. Is that Yahweh the way? He's the truth, he's the light. Teach me the way of your statutes, your, your ordinances, your, your, your misfire. You have laid a line. You said not to go over that line. He said, I want you to teach those statutes unto me. And he said, I shall keep it till the end. He said, teach me your statutes. Teach me your ways, Almighty Yahweh. Show me how to walk. That, that, that I, I have understanding of this path and this way. He said, that I may keep it unto the end. To Helium 119, 107. See what he has to say there. So we must be taught the statutes of Almighty Yahweh. 19.107 says, he said, I am afflicted very much, very much. Was he not afflicted very much? Was not Eob afflicted very much? He says, to quicken me, enlighten me, reveal unto me Almighty Yahweh according to your word. He said, least or accept I beseech you. He said, the free will offering of my mouth. He said, I want those two things to be acceptable unto you, Yah. The free will offerings of my mouth, my, my praise, my tehillim, my songs that I have written and that I sing unto you. He says, oh, Yahweh, again, he says, to teach me your judgments. Do we not need these things to be taught? Dawid, even his position as being a king, still he had a lot to learn, did he not? He knew that. 
He knew that. So he wrote Yahweh, he says, and your Ahava, your, your, your tender hasid, your long suffering. He says, teach me your judgments. Verse 109. He said, my nephesh is continually in my hand. You ever heard this name? I'm holding my heart in my hand. Fragile. I'm, I'm, I run out of options. I need you. He said, my nephesh is continually in my hand. Yet, do I not forget your Torah? He said, even though I'm at a weak state, I'm holding my love in my hand. He said, yeah, I have not forgotten your Torah. I still zakar. I remember your, 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 the testimonies and the, your judgments that I not walk astray. Verse 110. He said, the wicked have laid a snare up for me, yet I err not from your precepts. Told you, yeah. Verse 111. He said, your testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. He said, they mean something. They're my heritage. I have ascertained. They're my lot. They're my possessions. They belong to me. Your testimonies have I taken as my heritage, my lot forever. For they are what? The rejoicing of my land. He said, it's the only thing that brings rejoicing. The heritage, the lot you have given me, the portion of your Mishnah and your Torah, the things I have learned, which I know, it's, it's all I have that brings me joy and contentment yep. and rejoicing of my life. Verse 112. He said, I have inclined my life to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. Hallelujah. Even to the end. Hallelujah. And the end of life. He wasn't talking about the end of the world. He saw the end of his life. When he takes his last breath, as, as the, his visual becomes dim, he said, even unto the end of all things. Uh, just listen to this a few more verses. This is in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. We have been instructed to hear counsel. Proverbs 19, 20. Mishli. Hear counsel. And receive the instruction of discipline. We must have that. We must receive counsel. That's how we are filled, by receiving. A, a, a vessel has to, refill what, has to receive what is being poured into it. That we knew that. That's why he said, teach me. Pour into me this knowledge and this understanding, this counsel, and I will retain it all of my life. Fill me with this oil. Hear counsel and receive the instruction of discipline. That you be what? Wise. We must receive that. See, the five foolish did not receive the wisdom of the, the counsel and the teaching of Torah. They didn't receive it. That's why they were not able to buy it. They didn't buy it. They didn't believe it. That you'll be wise in your latter end. Shirat, chapter 7, verse 36. This one verse in Shirat. I want to go to Exodus for a, a few minutes, Israel. Hallelujah. Start to bring this to a close today. I want you to be enlightened with understanding, with knowledge, Israel. We must be filled. It's not too late for us to go out and buy, but that time is approaching us. So you must buy now. How do we buy? You, by laying down your lust, your desires, your want, and buying the Torah. You buy the truth. Hallelujah. Shirak says in 736, and all that you do, and all that you do, all that you put your hands to do, that you accomplish, that you ascertain, remember, he says, the end. The erith, the end of your life, and all that you do. Remember the end of your life. Remember that this Life is just a vapor of, of smoke. You, you see it, and then it's, it's gone. So in everything that you do, remember your life. Remember that. Then, he says, will you never sin? He spoke the truth. Then you will never sin. It's true. We sin because we don't think about the end of our life. We don't think about we can, in the next minute we're gone. We, we have time. We believe we have time. And we continue to sin. 
There's a, there's a scripture that Akshemi quotes many a times concerning that. That because that husset has been extended unto them, that the heart of man is set. It is set as hard to do evil. So he says, if you will remember your life and the end of your life that that be before you, he said, then you will not sin before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I, I got another probably four pages, Israel. Hallelujah. But I want to bring this down to an end. Let us not be weary, Israel, in the instruction of the Mitzvah, the Torah. Uh, I, have, I was going to talk about double sinning, which is two. I've already somewhat explained that unto us that we should understand, even concerning uh, the inheritance, our inheritance, and the inheritance of the firstborn. But even as I talked about, even the one that had two wives, had two sons, one of the wives he hated, one of the wives he loved. But the inheritance was given unto the one that was hated. He didn't even have to be the firstborn. It was given to him. That was uh, a just way. Because if it wasn't so, then if the wife was hated, then most, more or less the son was going to have nothing. It would have been given unto the one that was more favorable. But yet, in the law of Moshe at that time, it was given to the one that the, 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 the wife, her son, the wife that was hated, her son was given the double portion. Hallelujah. The lot unto him. It was given to him. Both of them received the portion, but the the, the son of the one that was hated received the double portion. Hallelujah. Yah has given us a double portion, Israel. Yah. Yahshua commanded us that even in his going that we should do greater works. How are we going to do greater works? Let me read this real quick. Hallelujah. This is concerning Elisha and Elijah. Hallelujah. I want to read that. Let me find, find that. I got it right here. It's in 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. I want to go through this quickly. So there's a point I want to, I want to reference here concerning this, this double portion. And it came to pass when Yahweh would take up Eliah into the Shemayim by a whirlwind. That Eliah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Eliah said to Elisha, Terry here, I pray you, for Yahweh has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said to him, As said to him, as Yahweh lives, and as your nephesh lives. He said, I will not leave you. He said, I will be by your side. I have seen the, the wonderful things that have been done by your hand through Almighty Yahweh. I have witnessed those things. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets that were there at Bethel came forth unto Elisha and said to him, Know you that Yahweh will take away your master from your head today, that he would take Elisha? And he said, yes, I know that. I understand that. He, he told me, but I wanted to be with him. He said, I know it. And be you silent. He said, be you quiet. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray you, for Yahweh has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as Yahweh lives, and as your nephews live, he said, I will not leave you. When we leave Yahshua very easily, do we not? We don't want to latch unto Yahshua HaMashiach. So they came to Jericho. He went to Jericho. And the son of the prophet was there in Jericho and came to Elisha and said to him, Know you that Yahweh will take your master from your head today? And he answered, Yes, I know. And be silent. Verse 6. And Elisha said, Terry, here I pray you. Here, for Yahweh has sent me to Jordan. And he said, as Yahweh lives, and as your nephews live, I will not leave you. And the two went on. And it goes on and on in that manner, Israel. I want to move down to 
Let, let, let me just move on. Verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off. And they stood by Yarden. This is uh, 2 Melchizedek, 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm at verse 8. Verse 8. And Eliah took his mantle and he wrapped it up and smote the waters. And they were divided here and there. So they went both. They went over on dry ground. And it came to pass in verse 9, 2 Kings 2, verse 9. When they were going over, that Eliah said to Elisha, Ask what, ask what I will do for you. In other words, what can I do for you? Ask, and it will be done. He said, Before I be taken away. Now, all this time, he knew that Elisha would be taken away. But yet, he did not tarry at the places from place to place. He went with him. But this is the final time. This is where he will be taken up by the chariot of fire. And Elisha said, he said, I pray you. He said, let a double portion of your ruach, of your anointing, of your oil. You feel with the oil? I, I want twice that amount. Hallelujah. He said, I want twice that amount. We should die, desire more, Yisrael. Double. That's not too much to ask of Almighty Yahweh. But look what Elisha said. He said, I pray, let a double portion of your ruach be upon me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing. You have asked a hard thing. He said, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a gado. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mighty thing you have asked. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so to you. But if not, it should not be so. And it came to pass, they still went on and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and the horse of fire. And it parted them both asunder, and Eliah went up by a whirlwind into the Shemayim. And when Elisha, when he saw it, he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel." And the horsemen thereof. And I saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces. And he took up the mantle. He had to take the mantle. He took the mantle. He left from the mantle, Yisrael. Yahshua has left us the mantle. Even though he has gone up to the Shemayim, he left us the mantle. And said, greater work shall we do. So there's nothing wrong with desiring the double portion. That lot has been given unto us. But we must pick up the mantle. We must take up our stake. We must pick up the quote cross, unquote, those of you that are listening. We must pick it up. We have to pick it up. Hallelujah. So he took up the mantle also that Eliah, that fell from him, and he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took that same mantle of Eliah, that fell from him, and he smote the waters and said, There is Yahweh. Where is Yahweh, the servant master of Eliah? And when he also had smitten the waters, what did they do? They parted here and there. The very same thing. The waters parted here and there, and Elisha, he went over. Hallelujah. All we have to do is take hold of the mantle, Yisrael. Take hold of that, the very same thing that Yahshua HaMashiach, that he did all things to please his Abba. That's all we have to do. And he said, Yahshua uh, promised that these works that I do, you shall do. This is the very same example. These, these, these two incidents go in correlation with each other. Hallelujah. Well, what was the mantle that Yahshua left? He left the comforter. So let us hold on to his mishra, his Torah, because that's all that comforts us. It's what keeps us, and what keeps us filled, and what allows the oil to be fresh, and also that the savoring smell of that oil is precious before the presence of Almighty Yahweh, that we are filled. So Yahshua, he left us and says, that the works that I do, you shall do, but yet greater works. So let us receive of the double portion, Israel. Yahweh has given, but there's nothing wrong with desiring twice that. 
Hallelujah. Told you, y'all. I want to bring this teaching to an end today. Told you, y'all. And Matiti, y'all. I tell you what, let me, let me do Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 through 11. Then we're going to move to Matitia as I bring this to a close. It says in Romans chapter 1, verse 8, because we need the gifts, Yisrael, of Almighty Yahweh with truth. First, I thank my Abba. This is a letter. You must understand this has been written unto Be'ako Yisrael. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, for you all, that your emona, your faith, is spoken of throughout the whole Olam. For Yahweh is my witness, whom I serve with my Ruach and the message of Yahshua HaMashiach, his son. That without ceasing that I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if, any, if by any means, now a length I might have a prosperous journey, by the will of Almighty Yahweh to come unto you. So he was writing that he desired to come unto them, to, to, to meet them, to be with them. Verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart. He said, I may impart. That I may put something in you. Elijah put something in Elijah. Yahshua has put something in the house of Yisrael. That we should do greater works, greater things. He said, I may impart unto you, the gifts of the Ruach. Why? What for? He said, to the end, that you may be established. That we are established. We are rooted and grounded in Torah truth. That nothing will cause us to move. Hallelujah. Nothing will cause us, uh, even our feet, to slip. Matitia chapter 28, verse 16. He says here in TTI in my closing, chapter 28, verse 16. And when the 11 disciples went away to Galilee, to a mount where Yahshua had appointed them, and when they saw him, the Torah said they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Yahshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in the Shemayim and in the Olam. This is after. Yahshua HaMashiach has been raised. Verse 19. He said, Go you therefore and teach all nations, immersing them in the name of Almighty Yahweh, our Abba, and by the authority of Yahshua HaMashiach, by the Ruach HaKodesh. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, he says, I am with you always. Is that not a promise? That's something we can hold on to, that he is always with us. He is with us always. He says, even unto the end of the world. Even to the end of the world. He said, he is with us. He said, my anointing, my Ruach HaKodesh, it fills those vessels, your vessels, and I am with you until the end of the world. He said, it is so, and let it be fulfilled. My last verse is here in Revelation, Gilyana chapter 2, verse 25 through 29. We must make sure we're ready. We should desire to be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. We should desire to be endowed with the anointing of Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh has set us aside for his own use. We're all anointed by his Ruach HaKodesh. And it's not just any oil. It's of the finest of his Ruach. It's a sweet-smelling odor that when we walk by the world or anyone, they should be able to say, Mm, that, that smells, there's something about that one. That smells very nice. I wonder what he has on. I wonder what she is wearing. What's the name of that? Is that isn't that what you ask when you smell something? Like, oh, man, what he, what you wearing? Ah, what's that? Or oh, Hope got something. Just tell me what that is. Don't get me some of that. That's the same thing with the Ruach of Almighty Yah. They will ask questions of the imuna that we have. Because it's so, it's so visual that they can see it, they can smell it. Revelations chapter 2, verse 25. But that which you have already, what we have heard, what we have understood, 
That what you have already, hold fast till I come. Those things that I have placed in you, I have warned you. As that we desired the teaching of his mitzvah of his Torah, I have taught you. I have filled you with the Ruach HaKodesh. He said, what you have, he said, hold fast to it till I come. And he that overcomes and keeps my words to the end. We should keep his words to the end. Whether it's the end of life, the end of our imuna, the end of this world. He said, if he keeps my word to the end, he said, to him will I give the power over the nations. And he shall rule with them, with the rod. He shall rule them with the rod of iron. The rod being the word of Almighty Yahweh, his mitzvah, his Torah, his commandments. He says, as the vessels, did we talk about the vessels? Did I talk about the vessels? We all are vessels. He says, as the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken into shivers. He said, I shall break them, the nations. I shall destroy them. Even as I have received of my Abba, verse 28. He said, I will give to him the morning star. 29, as I end. And he that has an ear, he says, let them hear. We should shema. The message today, wherever you're listening, the message that are, that's on the website, you have messages on your, your, your iPads or whatever, listen to them, Israel. Learn. Sometimes it's, it's tough and it's important to go back some years on the messages or even that we have on the website that we grasp understanding and knowledge and wisdom. He said, he that has ear to hear, let him hear what the Ruach says unto the congregation. So let us hear. Let us shema. Let us understand Israel. I'm just a simple message, messenger. But I pray this message today has been enlightenment for your Ruach. That we stand on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. That we desire to be filled. And even wanting that double portion. Hallelujah, of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. That we can do as Yahshua had commanded. He said, you should do the works that I do, but he said, greater works. So this desire to be filled, that we can endure, that we can stand, that we can fight, that we will remain strong. We have to have men that are strong. We have to be strong. I have to be strong for my Zakane Shimmery. He has to be strong for me. Same thing with you, a whole in. You have to be strong for one another. Why? Because we are one body. We're all members in particular. You hear so many times the fingers, the toes, but we're all one body. And we're stronger together as a body than separated. I can't use this, this joint, this, this ligament is separated. That arm's no good. It's no use. Can't use it for anything. And it holds back the rest of the body. I have to learn how to use just this hand. So let us all do our responsibilities what we're supposed to do, Yisrael, y'all, being strength to one another, that we stand in these last and evil days, in this time of darkness. Hallelujah. And that we remind one another to make sure that we go and that we buy the truth, that we sell it not, that we will be filled with the Ruach, HaKadosh, the oil of Almighty Yahweh. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael, y'all. It's been a wonderful day, wonderful time to be here with you all, that we can break the bread and the oil the wine, in the presence of Almighty Yahweh, and die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us shoot, let us turn. Abba Yahweh, we do Baraki for this beautiful day. Of course, every day is beautiful, Abba Yahweh. Every time, the lot you have given to us, Yahweh, we Baraki for it. We told you, Yahweh, for all the conditions, those that are here gathered with us today, those that are listening by via of live stream, we ask you to strengthen the houses of the condition of Abba Yahweh, those that are sick. The weak in their bodies, Abba Yahweh. We fill them, Abba Yahweh, today with the Ruach HaKadosh of understanding and of joy. That even that through the trials and tribulations and, the, and those tests, that we can come out joyful, knowing that we have Teshua, we have victory in Yahshua HaMashiach. Those that have come to gather with those that are listening to be with us here, return them to their homes, Abba Yahweh, to their appointed places at the time, and protect them, Abba Yahweh. Let your Torah, your words, will be a hedge about Kol Yisrael. 
And all things we do, Barak you, we give you Todah, and the precious and wonderful name of Yahshua HaMashiach we do declare. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisraya, Yahweh Barak. Hallelujah. Shalom, Akmakaya, Ak Zephaniah. All you that are listening, Ahok Mikaya, Yahweh Barak you all, all Yisraya, Shalom.